so now we are doing circles what is a circle circle is a plain closed curve first of all you must understand it is a plain closed curve plain means it is going to lie on a two dimensional surface it is closed means you will not see it opening from any point right it will always be having some closed path and it is a curve because it is not straight so it is a plain closed curve comprising of all those points whose distance from a fixed point remains constant now what do i mean by this say for example this is a fixed point right a and we have so many other points b c d e f and g now we have all these points can we find out the distance of all these points from the center this one this is the distance of each point from the center and we say this distance is equal that means all the distances of all the points of the respective points is same from this fixed point a so that means if you see the line which is making which is comprising all the points all these on this place yeah you can see d c b g f e all the points are comprised of in a curve that curve is known as your circle right and because this distance is going to remain constant for all the points you can have so many other points also on the circle which are going to remain at the same distance from this fixed point a that was about the circle now what is center center is a fixed point on the circle from which all the points on the circle are equidistant so here the point that i took was a right so this point over here from which all the points on the circle are equidistant that fixed point is known as the center we can have centers for these circles also this is the center this is the center from which all the points on the circle are going to be equidistant next we have the radius the fixed distance fixed distance of any point p on the circle from the center you can take point p anywhere on this circle right this can be p or this can be p this or this or anywhere on the circle any point can be a p point which is at a fixed distance from the center so this distance from the center is known as the radius of the circle this fixed point is known as the center of the circle right these are the two very important parameters of a circle that you must know next we have the circular region now the circular region is divided into two parts that is interior and exterior circular region interior means that will be having points at a distance from center which is lesser than the radius now that means over here i have marked the interior of the circle this is the interior and in the next figure i have marked or you can say i have shaded the exterior of the circle the difference is that if this is interior of the circle all the points that are going to lie here say a b c d e are at a distance from the center which is less than the radius because the radius would be this value and all these points from the center are at a distance lesser than radius so if the points are at a distance less than radius all of them are lying in the interior of the circle correct now what about the exterior if i want to discuss the exterior part the exterior part would be here so we can have the points outside the circle right now you can check that distance of these points p q r from the center the distance of these points from the center is going to be greater than the radius because this is the radius but these points are lying away so you can check that the distance would be greater than the radius right so these points p q and r are lying in the exterior of the circle and points a b c d e are lying in the interior of the circle now we have the chord chord is the line segment please pay attention chord is a line segment 
joining any two points on a circle. Now that means you can have a circle like this. This is one circle and these are any two points on the circle. If you want to join these two points with a line segment, this line segment AB is representing the chord. AB is the chord of the circle because it is a line segment that joins any two points on the circle. Your two points can be anywhere else also, right? One could be here, other could be here. Just two points on the circle are joined by a line segment. That line segment is known as chord. Here only we get another term that is diameter. Diameter is actually the longest chord of the circle. What will be the diameter in this case? The diameter would be here. That is the longest chord possible. The two points on the circle are joined by a line segment which is passing through the center of the circle, right? So this is the possibly maximum or you can say the longest chord of this circle. So that is known as the diameter. So we'll name it as diameter now. Next is the secant. In secant we have the line intersecting circle at two distinct points. Now there could be a line which intersects this circle at say for example this is one line now this line is intersecting the circle at two different points you can see that on your own here and here so if there is a line I'm not saying the line segment I am saying it is a line line is this line segment means which has end points so if a line segment is there which is passing through two points on a circle that is a chord. If there is a line passing through the two points on a circle that will be known as a secant. So we have this as the secant of this chord. You can say secant of this circle. So I have named it as secant. Next is the tangent. Tangent is also a line which meets a circle at one point only. So you can say the difference between secant and tangent is that secant meets the circle at two points whereas the tangent meets the circle at one point only. So how do we make a tangent over here? We can make a tangent here going like this. This is the tangent passing through the circle. So this tangent is meeting the circle only at one point. So we can say this is the tangent. So I am going to write over here tangent so that you can understand where is the tangent shown, right? So that is the tangent as it is a line that passes through the circle touching at only one point. Now we have the arcs. Pay attention, arc is nothing but part of the circle only between two points on a circle. Now the two points could be this, let us name it C. Now there are two points C and A. Now there is a part of circle which is shown like this, right? And there is another part of the circle which I am going to highlight with blue. You can check this is another part of the circle. I am highlighting it. So you can see how the two points are dividing the circle into two parts, right? One is the one that I have shown with the red boundary and the rest one is shown with this blue boundary over here. Now this blue boundary is showing you clearly that just these two points A and C are having two parts. One is this much and the rest is the blue shown with the blue one. So that means there the arc is always dividing the circle into two parts and that is major arc and minor arc. So if you have the arc greater than the semicircle now semicircle we were going to discuss later but I'll include it here only. In semicircle we have the half the length of the circle. So this is the half length of the circle, right? This is the half of the circle that is the semicircle. So if you have the arc greater than the semicircle that will be your major arc and if it is lesser than the semicircle it will it is going to be your minor arc. You can check over here the red portion is lesser than the semicircular part so that represents the minor arc whereas the blue portion is definitely greater than the semicircular part so that represents the major 
uh, arc part okay so now we have the circumference as i discussed it in between only circumference is actually the total length that means if you start walking from this point and you followed a circular path you came back to the same point this the entire length or the entire distance that you traveled is your circumference right so circumference is the entire length but if you divide it into two halves that is you can do the half of the semicircle that gives you the circle uh, the semicircle here you can write clearly that it is going to be the half of circumference because as i discussed with you semicircle is going to be the half of circumference if you divide the length into two parts the half of circumference is going to give you the semicircle next we have the sectors now for sectors we will be dealing with the regions right until now we were not bothered about the regions we were only discussing the points the lines but now we are talking about the region which will be enclosed by an arc now the region is going to be formed with the help of an arc and two radii right who through ends of an arc the two radii to be made are going to be done with the same arc you can check over here if this is the center i take two points that is this is center o i have taken a and b two points on the circle right there is another arc between the two points the arc between these two points is this the one that i am highlighting with red right so this is the arc between the two points and the other two things will be the two radiuses through the end of these two points so the radius through the end is going to be like this for both the cases right now the region between the two radiuses and this arc is representing your sector or you can highlight it like this this region the ones that i am shading is representing your sector so we can write on this sector and there are two types of sectors possible one is major and other is minor if the region is containing major arc the sector will be major sector for example here only this arc is have this two points are having another arc behind that is the black one so that is the major arc and this red one is the minor arc so if the major arc is there and you have the two radiuses to the ends of the arc that is representing the major sector so we can write over there that this the unshaded portion is your major sector whereas in the lower portion with the one that has been shaded it has the arc and the two radiuses so it represents the minor sector because it consists of the minor arc here you have the minor arc and above where you have the major segment major sector you have the major arc right so it depends if you have the minor arc or major arc if you have the major arc and two radii it will give you major sector if you have the minor arc and you have the two radii that would give you minor sector 